The opinions expressed here are those of the students and do not necessarily reflect the positions of Tyler Junior College. Coming up on the drumbeat, TJC's spring semester is right around the corner. We show you how to help with registration early. Later, we bring you the latest from the Out of the Loop storytelling series. After that, we'll see how students are celebrating Thanksgiving this week on Drumbeat on the Street. The Drumbeat starts right now. Broadcasting live from Studio 1108 in Jenkins Hall on the campus of Tyler Junior College, this is The Drumbeat, bringing you the latest from students like us. Thank you for joining us here on this November edition of The Drumbeat. I'm Justin Walters. Spring course sign-up is right around the corner, and TJC is hosting a registration rally. Registration opens on November 14th. The registration rally will take place from the 15th through the 19th in the second floor of the Rogers Student Center. Students can meet with advisors to help register for classes and build a schedule. Be sure to act fast to make sure you get to make the schedule you want. Saturday, online news magazine The Tyler Loop hosted season six of Out of the Loop Storytelling event at the Rogers Performing Arts Center. The Tyler Loop is a nonprofit East Texas journalism and storytelling outlet. The event had eight speakers and performers that shared their stories and even a juggling act. That's kind of cool. The purpose of the, this event was for the Tyler Loop to share stories of people here in, East Tex, in the East Texas area and to gather donations. The Drumbeat Student Media produced the live stream for the event. In other good news, TJC professor Amanda Radcliffe has been named Community College Educator of the Year. Congrats to her. Amanda Radcliffe is a speech professor for TJC, the Texas Speech Communication Association, an association dedicated to providing quality academic programs, nominated Radcliffe for this award. Her colleagues have described her as the most engaging, professional, dedicated, and honorable professor that they have ever known. The most important way to engage with students is just to listen and see what their interests are, what their fears are, especially with public speaking, you know. It's important to understand that this is a class that people are n not excited about taking. And so being able to listen and understand where they're coming from, what level of communication apprehension they have, and where they want to go, what their goals are with the class, I think that's a really important part for any professor, and that's how I typically engage. Professor Radcliffe continues to engage her students and help them with their educational journeys. 40 mile per hour winds last week caused several tree limbs to fall all over campus. A large tree limb ended up falling on the Jenkins building causing damage to the roof. To protect students from falling branches, the plaza was blocked off and students were rerouted to the side entrances of Jenkins. The dead trees and fallen branches were later removed. Like it was very threatening. I thought that it was closer to me than it sounded. Like it sounded like it was like right behind me or right in front of me. But when I went to go look, it was further, but it was very close and very scary. Time for drum beat on the street, and since it's Thanksgiving, Santiago Nunez asked TJC students what plans they had for the upcoming week-long Thanksgiving break. Good afternoon. My name is Santiago Nunez, and I'm here with the drum beat on the street, temporarily the drum beat inside the building. And this week, I will be asking people what they were planning on doing for Thanksgiving break this year, if anything at all. Absolutely sleeping. That's all I'm going to do, really. Um, catch up on a few movies. The Eternals are coming out this, this in a month. So. Just that, really. No Thanksgiving dinner planned. So if you want to invite me. <laughs> um, planning just to drive home, uh, be with my family, and go support my hometown's basketball team during Christmas, not Christmas break, Thanksgiving break. So that's what I'm going to mostly about this time. <laughs> well, actually, I am a farmer. I work on a pecan orchard. So I'm probably going to be picking up pecans during Thanksgiving break. We sell around maybe a thousand over a thousand every year so that's what i'll be doing all break <laughs> and hopefully relaxing after that um i'm going back to gainesville texas with my family for the week since it's going to be my birthday coming up after the break our host nikki t arena will be interviewing a member of the stamp club you're watching the drumbeat stay with us In four days. there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. <laughs> she had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Did you have a good day at school? She gave them some broth. 
without any bread. There you go. And kiss them all soundly. Night night. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. During high school, I hung with the wrong crowd and I never graduated. I helped Santiago in many different ways like all fathers do because he always wanted to go to college. I felt a little embarrassed to come back to school, but eventually once I came here, I knew that it's for a bigger goal. He was very dedicated, hardworking. He connected with his teachers. He connected with other students. That was one of the key reasons why he was able to keep forging ahead. It was amazing to see him graduate. This was one thing that meant so much to him. And of course, it meant so much to us too. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed. That support is everything. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to the drum beat. Here we have treasurer of the STEM club, Jerry Kaler, an engineering design major here at TJC. So why did you want to have a STEM club? We wanted to make a STEM club because we noticed there was a huge gap in the system. We, most of our programs here at TJC are STEM related in some form or fashion. We have two buildings, Genicove and Pirtle, both dedicated to science and technology. So we wanted to fill that missing niche in our community. And what inspired you to create the STEM club that we now know? Well, I was a student at Tyler ISD and had the honor of participating in the Career and Technology Center. And there we had a community of people who were always willing to help one another out with things, interactive courses where we could work with the welding students and the graphic design students and the health and science students. And I wanted to bring that here to TJC as well. I wanted to make a community where it was all inclusive and where everyone could come and visit. And what activities do you want to see the members of the STEM club participating in? Well, we're especially excited about rockets right now. We got an offer from one of our local high schools to participate in a joint rocket group where we're hoping to launch it up to five miles in the air. We're super excited about that. We're also looking into robotics and coding is another competition that we've looked at. Ooh, interesting. Um, so what are some STEM myths you want to debunk for our audience? Well, first of all, you don't have to be good at math. There's a lot of students around that you think everybody has to be good at math in order to be a STEM major. No, you don't. That's why there's three other letters. Same for technology. You don't have to be a computer whiz. You can still participate in the science and the engineering departments. We're not, uh, we're not exclusive. We want everyone to enjoy it. And are there any special events that y'all are participating in? We're super excited about this Saturday, actually, uh, at Elijah's Retreat in Jacksonville. It's a camp for autistic children and their families to learn social, uh, to learn social interactions and anxieties. But uh, we're going to be down there for their fall festival with a booth. It's going to have a bunch of you know, cool interactive uh, opportunities for the kids. And I encourage everyone to come and visit because it's not just for us. All right, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. When we come back, we'll have sports with Kiara Robinson. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Why? 
There you go. Thank you. Thank you. I don't remember how it started. Start the dance. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back to the Drumbeat. I'm Kiera Robinson, your sports anchor. With the basketball season in full swing, both the men's and the women's team have tasted victory and defeat. The women started the season off with a strong and 75-point victory over Southwestern Christian College. The men also started the season off with an exciting overtime win over Southwestern as well. Since then, both teams have yet to win, but there is a long season ahead. Both teams are hoping to enter the NJCAA Region 14 tournament in March. To find out when the games will be, visit TJCAthletics.com. In football, the Apaches traveled to Kilgore to play the Rangers this past weekend, where they lost 31-21. There are two bright spots to the loss, however. Although being banged up and cut on the chin, General Booty is good to go next week per Coach Thomas Rucker. The other bright spot is TJC will have a revenge game against Kilgore this Saturday. Hoping to finally topple a foe, they have fallen to twice before. If they win, TJC will go on to face the winner of the matchup between Blinn College and New Mexico Military Institute. The TJC Apache men's soccer team beat the Coastal Bend Cougars last Tuesday 3 to nothing. The first goal was scored in the 39th minute by Rath Mangandoza with an assist by Jonathan Martinez. Martinez then went on to a score a few minutes later in the 42 second minute with assist coming from Tiger Smalls. The final goal was scored in the 80th minute by Tiger Small with an assist from Muhammad Shabadorn. Move on to women's soccer action. The team faced off against Angelina College in the semifinals of Region 14 playoff action. TJC defeated Angelina two goals to one. After that, they beat Navarro College in the Region 14 finals. In their final game until the NJCAA championship play, the team traveled to Fort Worth to play Hill College in the district championship. The game had no goals until the 58-minute Esselina Galacute landed a shot in the net after an assist from Rocio Fernandez, and the Apaches won a district championship. The team will travel to Daytona Beach, Florida with a national tournament. The Apache volleyball team competed in a tournament over the past weekend. The team went 4-1 in the tournament play. They first played Trinity Valley and defeated them three sets to none. They followed this up with a close loss to Blinn College at three sets to two. The two went on to win their remaining three games, sweeping Warden College before only allowing Trinity Valley and Panola to score one set in their matches. The national tournament will be held November 18th through the 22nd and is held in Hutchinson, Kansas. Coming up on the drum beat, our host Nikki Tarina will interview a veteran benefits specialist here at TJC. I feel like like her heartbeat is like same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's there's room for me and mom. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. She's really good with Anya. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet. And this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's going to be cool. She's my superhero. Good job, kid. When we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. 
They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. You know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... <laughs> Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Welcome back to the Drumbeat. Veterans Day is tomorrow, so I have with me Jessica Mitchell, the Veteran Benefits Specialist from Veteran Affairs here at TJC. So, right now, what does an average day in your office look like? Um, well, we're gearing up for registration and enrollment. Um, those are always going to be busier times for us, so there is an ebb and flow to the office. Um, usually it's phones ringing off the hook and running back and forth to speak with students. Um, we do, of course, have some downtime, and we use that time to prepare for the enrollment periods and to uh, kind of set up events for our, our students. So with the registration coming up, um, is there anything you are trying to like really focus on to help improve the process? Yeah, actually, we have priority registration for our veterans, active duty service members, and um, their families that go to TJC. Um, they all have been advised, they've all been invited um, to the event tomorrow. We're going to be up by the advisors in the Rogers Student Center. We've got some giveaways for them. They can set up their benefits and get registered for classes. All right. And um, what are some of the things that the Veterans Office is very proud of doing? Um, we actually just won an award for uh, veterans, or service to veterans in the area um, from Empowerment CDC um, at their Veterans Banquet this past weekend. So we're very proud of that. Um, we also are really proud of the customer service that we've been working on over the past few years. Um, and we just want to make sure that we're there for our students. Have we won awards like this in the past? Um, I believe this was the inaugural banquet for them, so wow. this is the first time that, um, that I'm aware of that we've won something from them because it was the first one. All right. And uh, what made you want to work for the Veterans Affairs here at TJC? Um, there's a lot of people in my family that are veterans. Um, my fiancé is a Marine. Um, my grandfather was in the Army. My sister married into a Marine family, so, you know, family events are filled with <laughs> military members. Um, but really, it's kind of in my blood. All right. And what's something you want students to know about the Veterans Affairs Office? Um, that we're there for them. Uh, it's not just setting up benefits. If they have any questions about the entire process, even after they've started school, um, if they don't know where to find a resource, anything like that, I'm happy to help. I always tell my students that I'm their person at TJC. So if they have any questions, even if it's not about benefits, they can always come to my office. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Day of the Dead dance. Stay with us. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help and provided her help, she realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in herself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Kids! I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it.
Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Kids, you all right? This family's prepared. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 for more information. Welcome back to the drumbeat. Before we go, we got one more story for you. The Hispanic Student Organization held a Day of the Dead dance on Tuesday last week. The dance took place in the Apache Rooms, which are next to the cafeteria in the Rogers Student Center. Dia de los Muertos is a day of celebrating the dead, with the second day traditionally being the day of festivities. Nikki, back to you. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, you can always find the latest news at thedrumbeat.com. The opinions expressed here are those of the students and do not necessarily reflect the positions of Tyler Junior College.